The Great War through a London child's eye. November the 20th, 1916. I went over to the Parrys to see how Sid was and if there had been word from his father. Mrs Parry was there. She was telling us about the days before the war. Things certainly sounded much quieter back then, even without the bombings. Let me help you with those bags, Mrs Parry. Oh, thank you, Edward. Ah, Sydney, put the kettle on. There's a love. I've never seen town so busy. Once there's a rumour of a delivery, every man Jack turns out to queue. And so noisy. Before Sydney was born, you wouldn't have seen any of their motors at all on the street, let alone trams and buses. Going uptown, you'd hear nothing much more than horses' hooves and the rattle of carts. They say you can't get a horse for love nor money now. The army needs every beast it can get to pull the artillery at the front. That's why deacons have switched their delivery boys to bicycles. They're not the first and they won't be the last. Mother says it's hard for the farmers. They have to give up their best horses to the war effort. And with so many farmhands going for the front, there's very few people left to grow the crops. Don't forget the land army of women, Edward. They're doing a sterling job to keep things going. Although they've certainly got their work cut out. Well, at least I've got my trusty old bicycle. Better than an old nag, if you ask me. Bicycles certainly are a jolly helpful invention. They don't need feeding. And they don't make such a mess. <laughs> Sydney, yes. But I miss the old days. Things used to be much more peaceful. Well, everything was more peaceful before the war, Mum. <laughs> That's true enough. Although steam trains aren't so new. I'll never forget the first time I saw one of those when I was a little girl. Ferocious-looking thing with all that steam. I thought it would eat me alive. Steam trains are tremendous fun. We went on holiday to the coast on one before the war. Well, the railways are certainly a godsend. But I'm still not sure I fancy stepping on one of those steaming beasts. I suppose things move at a faster pace these days, with the electric underground trains thundering under the street and the trams clanking around on the streets. Here, the girls in the factory say that there's jobs to be had for women on the underground now. Since conscription, I suppose there are less men around to do jobs. Well, that's right. Such a smart uniform, too. A great broad-brimmed hat and a long dark skirt. Very swish. We women are just as able to clip a ticket or guard a carriage as men. I dare say we could even drive the trains if they'd let us. Some ladies do drive. My grandmother has a motor of her own, and she learned how to drive before the war. She prefers to be driven around, though, now. Well, it's all right for those who have the money. Here, is she still taking in the troops? Your mother said that she's turned some of her rooms over to the Red Cross for injured soldiers. Yes, she's got 20 men in her house at the moment. Well, bless my soul. I never thought I'd see the day. Mother says she fancies herself as Florence Nightingale. She even lets the Red Cross use her car as an ambulance to collect soldiers from the station. Cars are very valuable to the war effort. I tell you what, I fancy one of the motorcycles. you see seen them, and with a sidecar, all rushing around. I could deliver my telegrams in no time with one of those. And have more time to be idle, you mean? Now, where's that team? The Great War, through a London child's eye. Supported by the National Lottery through the Heritage Lottery Fund. Read Edward's diary at funkidslive.com slash greatwar.